Here's some big news coming in. Prime Minister Modi to chair a key review meeting amidst the rising COVID cases. The meeting is all set to begin shortly. The Prime Minister is to stake take stock of the situation after India has reported a spike in COVID cases. Health Minister and other top leaders to attend the Prime Minister's review meeting. India reports close to 1.5 lakh COVID cases in the last 24 hours. Let me cut across to Rahul Srivastava joining us for more. Rahul, Prime Minister to be holding a key meet, a review meeting on the rising COVID cases. We're seeing a surge Today, in the last 24 hours itself, we've recorded 1.5 lakh COVID cases. Who's going to be attending this meet and what's on the agenda? We are all uh, the health ministry top officials, uh, also people from the Niti Aayog who are monitoring the health situation uh, as far as the COVID situation is concerned. The Prime Minister, top PMO officials and others are likely to be part of this meeting. One, as you said, 1.5 lakh cases reported over the last 24 hours. The key factor here also is that uh, 3,700 odd cases of Omicron reported from across 27 states now means that now Omicron has uh, spread pan India. And that is why the alarm bells are ringing in the government, primarily because of the fact that while on one hand there has been a certain recovery as far as uh, the economic activity is concerned, most of the states have come with very come out with various degrees of uh, restrictions all, all over the country with major towns reporting yeah, weekend curfews night curfews and others now this is a, a, a situation in which what the government sources are saying that this is a faster spreading uh, uh, variant also it is not very uh, people are not coming out with very symptomatic and that means that testing has to be given a great amount of emphasis uh, primarily because of the fact that there could be people who may not be showing symptoms but could well be spreading the virus at this moment given that the festive season already has uh, caused a lot of damage. So much so, uh, Nabila, that in Parliament uh, nearly 400 people day before yesterday tested positive as far as COVID is concerned and uh, Raj Sabha and Lok Sabha had to announce uh, restrictions. So out of a 1,300 member staff in Parliament, you have 400 reporting uh, uh, testing positive and that is why in this meeting what we are being told that testing is and surveillance is going to return with vengeance means that the government is going to ask the state and all central agencies to improve and uh, uh, build on the testing and surveillance uh, elements so that the cases can be tested uh, treatment can be done because eventually a high case load may start impacting people with uh, comorbidities and that could mean pressure on the hospital system and also high fatalities and that's what something that the government does not want to happen it wants that the uh, cases should get restricted and that's why this review meeting by the prime minister what we one wonders that could there well be another uh, attempt by the government to review the progress also of the uh, the booster shots which are going to get delivered the young people being delivered vaccines uh, as far as the first phase is concerned all these elements in terms of testing, surveillance, preparedness to meet the numbers which can emerge in the coming days and also uh, vaccination drive. All these will be coming up for review in this meeting. All right, Rahul, thank you very much for joining us with those details on that. Now, these are live visuals coming in of the Prime Minister. He is all set to hold a review meeting. Uh, Rahul, another fear that people have at large is that will there be a lockdown that will be announced owing to the rise in COVID cases. In fact, Maharashtra had very well warned that if cases increase 20,000 mark a day, then they'll be forced to implement a lockdown in the state. Do you think that formula will be followed at all by the centre as well, Pan India? See, centre cannot, uh, centre uh, last time around, last in 2020, went in for a sweeping lockdown on the March 25th, 2020. And that had serious repercussions. Now, what uh, if you see post September 2020, there has been a delineation as far as the active protocols that need to be initiated in every state and city uh, to meet the meet the crisis, and that is why the centre is uh, playing the role more of a guide and a facilitator as far as states are concerned. 
Uh, what we are also told that health ministry is preparing teams uh, to uh, to be sent to various states wherever there is a crisis. Now, what the government really does not want are, are very strict clampdowns in terms of lockdowns to be imposed. What the government says that preventive is much better than uh, lockdowns which, uh, which should be imposed. Yes, uh, Maharashtra has announced a certain uh, benchmark or a limit ceiling as far as the number of cases is concerned. But right now what the government says, the situation is fluid. And uh, remember one more thing, Nabila, that what the government does in the coming days is going to be also very critical as far as the uh, election commission is concerned because election commission has put a ban on all rallies, all roadside road shows and other election campaigning elements till the 15th of January. Now, during this period, the Election Commission will be in active conversation with the Health Ministry, Central Health Ministry and state officials. Now, in case there are serious lockdowns and there is a serious spiraling as far as cases are concerned, that could well mean that the Election Commission may be forced to take a very hard stand, uh, a tough stand, make virtually this entire election to five states as virtual instead of being physical, much more severe restrictions could be coming. And that is why one would say that this meeting is extremely critical how the government goes about uh, to advise the states and also to facilitate in terms of preparedness and the uh, uh, availability of medicines and other infrastructure. Right. Uh, Rahul, of course, also the fear is whether the healthcare infrastructure this time around is prepared or not. We've heard the Prime Minister and uh, those from the government constantly repeating that the healthcare infrastructure across India has been ramped up, that the centre has been warning state governments to keep backup facilities, etc. But any survey that's been done to ensure that there wouldn't be a fallout like we had last time? Any additional measures that, have, that they've ado adopted this time? Yes, uh, uh, Nabila, the government, the central government and through the health ministry and its other organs is in constant touch with state governments and virtually a 24 hour uh, uh, regular update is created to ensure that whatever facilities, one, what kind of facilities are available on the ground and second, what kind of uh, functioning and that means how well they are working. Remember that in uh, 2020 March, at that time, India's uh, uh, government medical infrastructure, leave alone the private sector, had very poor availability, for example, of oxygen plants and uh, uh, ventilators. So much so that in March 2020 or April 2020, India had just 16,000 odd ventilators across the country in the government facilities. By the time it was April, May 2021, through PM Cares and other several measures, the government had provided something close to 670,000, uh, taking up the tally of ventilators to 70,000 across the country. There were virtually no oxygen plants today. A large number of oxygen plants have been created all over the country. And also, uh, there were problems uh, in 2021 in the second wave when the government found that one piece, things were ventilators and other items were not even installed in hospitals. That has been ensured through active monitoring that these uh, machines get installed. Beyond that, there were other problems like, say, for example, uh, 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 ventilators did not have proper connectivity with the uh, oxygen cylinders which are there. People were not trained. So a large exercise has been carried out to train personnel on the ground uh, through the agencies which are manufacturing the ventilators. Oxygen plants training has been going on. So what one can see that uh, the entire mapping of available oxygen and other elements which have been created uh, the government is trying to ensure that it is working, available whenever it is needed. Right now, the prime concern of the government is to ensure that unlike 2021, the second wave, there should not be a repeat or a rush of people as far as uh, the hospital facilities are concerned. And that is why test and surveillance is going to be the mainstay in the coming days. All right, Rahul, do stay with us. In fact, uh, we know that as part of the measure to fight COVID-19 pandemic in the country, the much-awaited rollout of the third dose of COVID vaccine is all set to begin tomorrow, the booster dose, as it's called. Now, India is all set to begin to inoculate the frontline workers with your booster shot. Tomorrow, slots will open up. Appointments for the third dose are already open via the COVID portal. The precautionary COVID dose will be given to healthcare and frontline workers and those over the age of 60 with comorbidities on consultation with a doctor.
The eligible population who have taken two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine can now directly take an appointment or walk into any vaccination center to do so. According to the government guidelines, shots will be given nine months after the second dose of the COVID vaccine. And according to guidelines, the precautionary dose will be the same vaccine administered previously in the first two doses. And we got across to Samarth, joining us for more on that. Samarth, uh, give us an insight into the booster dose. It's all set to be rolled out tomorrow. What are the preparations the state governments have made? See, Uttar Pradesh is all set for the booster dose or the this precautionary dose as it's a need of the hour for the state of Uttar Pradesh as the elections are coming and for that election commission has already announced various things, various protocols which need to be followed by all political parties and in that particular time the role of frontline workers becomes very crucial. In the panchayat elections we saw many teachers or workers dying or coming to COVID-19 yeah. so with that criteria the frontline workers will be vaccinated from tomorrow and that is the period of nine months after the second dose the same be it co-vaccine or COVID shield or any other vaccine the same dose of vaccine will be given it will be the third dose and Obviously, efforts are on in KGMU, civil hospital, and various hospitals of Lucknow, and not just in Lucknow, but uh, other 75 districts of Uttar Pradesh as well. So, yes, UP said as in the pre previous 24 hours, more than 6,500 cases have been reported in Uttar Pradesh, and more than five lives have have five persons have lost their lives. So, it's a matter of concern for Uttar well, Pradesh. As elections are coming for that. Every person should be vaccinated. And yeah, what so the booster said, dose is what we uh, see that uh, is going to be rolled out tomorrow. I hope adequate arrangements are made to ensure that people with comorbidities above the age of 60 are able to access the booster shot. Let me ask if those arrangements uh, are made in Delhi. Shreya Chatterjee joining us from Delhi. Shreya, give us an insight into what kind of uh, centers have been opened up for 60 plus age group to come in and get their booster shot. Of course, frontline workers also now eligible. Well, absolutely, Sonabila. You know, we do know that there are uh, arrangements that are made in uh, both government as well as private centers. Uh, so far as uh, the booster dose is concerned, uh, the uh, eligibility for this booster dose so far are for people for 60 plus with comorbidities as well as frontline workers. Crucial, all the more at the backdrop of the upcoming elections, because all uh, those officials who will be participating in the election work will also have to uh, be given the booster jab. So from tomorrow, that is all set to begin. Uh, the uh, uh, Registrations have already happened online. People have already registered. And from tomorrow, uh, we believe uh, the centers in Delhi, as far we know, have already been prepared. Both private and government centers will uh, be uh, inoculating this uh, booster jab to the uh, age group right. and the frontline workers uh, that is eligible for it. All right. I'm going to cut across to uh, Prema Rajaram as well, joining us from Kolkata. Prema, we see cases only on, this, on the rise in Kolkata. Despite that, the government does not seem to have imposed strict restrictions or given out a strict order for people not to step out unless necessary. Uh, while the cases, cases are on the rise, booster shot for those above the age of 60 with comorbidities, frontline workers to be rolled out tomorrow. Is Kolkata prepared enough? Well, as far as the cases are concerned, Nabila, yes, the cases are on the rise and one of the highest as far as the country is concerned. Uh, so that is a worry, which is why people should step out and take the booster shot. But uh, we heard Chief Minister Mamta Banji say a few days ago that about 40% of the population is yet to get the second dose of the vaccine. As of now, uh, six and a half crore people in the state have got the first dose of vaccine and about four and a half crore people have got the second uh, dose of vaccine, which means many people are yet to take the second dose of vaccine. Also, amidst the rising cases, there is some apprehension of people stepping out of their houses. However, as far as arrangements are concerned, uh, the, the, the various wards under the, the Kolkata Municipal Corporation are gearing up to administer the booster shots to uh, citizens above 60, uh, the age of 60, as well as frontline workers. And private hospitals, too, uh, will soon gear up to give up these booster shots to people. Back to you, Nabila. All right, Prema. Thank you very much, Rahul. Ba over to you, Rahul. Uh, here, booster shots are now going to be rolled out for those above the age of 60, frontline workers. Uh, is there enough sufficient amount of doses uh, that have been manufactured to cater to this population? Uh, I hope there's no shortage. Uh, many states have been complaining of a vaccine shortage, but a booster dose now, as it's now the new entrant, is there sufficient supplies? 
Sina Mildaka, there is concern also because a lot of frontline workers like doctors and others have reported tested positive. Now, what I would like to tell the viewers is that the Prime Minister's review meeting has also been joined by the Secretary Department of Biotechnology. Now, that means that a serious review of the availability of vaccines and other is also on the cards. Since Home Minister Amit Shah uh, and also the Secretary Home is uh, concerned are also attending the meeting, means uh, uh, a discussion vis-a-vis -vis whatever missives are to be sent to the states is also going to take place. Very importantly, in the review meeting, the Secretary of Civil Aviation and the Chairman and CEO of Railway Board are also attending the meeting. That, um, that sig gains significance primarily because it seems that the Prime Minister may also be reviewing uh, the transport sector. It could well be that the PM and the, con the government may be looking at how to tweak the transport and civil aviation sector in terms uh, to check the growth of, uh, of uh, the pandemic. And that is why the presence of the Secretary of Civil Aviation, because some amount of restrictions need to move because states like Bengal have already announced uh, restrictions on flights coming from certain hotspots in the country. Uh, that is why what one can say a very, very large review of all the sectors, in all, all elements uh, in controlling the pandemic or flattening the curve are likely in this review meeting by the Prime Minister. All right, Rahul, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, our reporters, for bringing us perspectives from your respective states.